Hey guys, Simply Betty here. I'm coming at you today with an announcement video. I have t-shirts available. I promised a while ago that when I hit 10,000 subscribers, I would have some t-shirts. And I looked the other day and I was past 10,000 subscribers. So thank you so much to everybody who follows my channel. I really appreciate it. And I, like I promised, I made some t-shirts. I have the link down below to Teespring where I have them available. Um, I think I made a nice little design, nice simple little design. You can wear any Anywhere, tell me if you like it. I was nominated to do the Fish Fam Tuber Challenge by a gentleman by the name of River Life. So here I am doing the challenge. I'm gonna answer some fun questions and then nominate people to do the challenge as well. So thanks, River Life. It is cold outside, guys. Brr! But I'm sitting in town. I have a nice hot coffee right here to hold. I have these wonderful mittens that my mama made me. Thanks, mom. I love them. Look how nice those are. The first question on the Tuber Challenge is how did you get into the hobby? Oh man. So I've been interested in fish and aquariums for a pretty long time. Out of high school, I had a job at a pet store back in Alaska. It was a nice pet store and I was the cashier. So every single day I'd have this wonderful view of the entire fish rack. And I just stare at them all day long and I thought to myself like, oh man, I really, really want fish. But I knew I couldn't have them. I was never really in a situation where I was staying in one place for long periods of time. I was moving across the country for jobs and I was moving to different apartments all the time and I lived kind of nomadically in my past career. So as much as I thought it'd be neat, I never pursued it. Then finally, I became stationary. I settled down, I, I I'm staying in one place. And I knew that I had to start this interest of mine. So that's how I got into the hobby. I've just been interested in a long time and finally I've been able to dive into it. The second question is how many tanks do you currently own? Okay, let's see. I have one, two, five, eight, nine, 10, 11, I have 11 tanks. A bunch of those are for spawns, for growing out fry from betta spawns. So that's how many tanks I have. I have a lot. I'm not counting all of my individual bettas that I keep housed separately. So I have a lot and I've lost track and I don't even know. But big tanks, like 10 gallons plus, I have 11. Warm up a little bit. My face is kind of getting numb. The third question is, what is your favorite fish that you currently own? That's obvious, guys. I'm obsessed with betta fish, domestic and wild, and I love them. Uh, that's the most obvious answer. But if I had to choose something besides my bettas, ooh, that's a tough one. I, let's see, I really like my celestial pearl danios. I really like my dwarf neon rainbow fish. I have some pseudomagill rainbow fish that I really enjoy, and CW10 orange laser corridoras that I really like, but I think if I had to choose my favorite, it would be my Ronchu goldfish. I have a fat little Ronchu goldfish and his name is Nugget because he looks just like a chicken nugget. So I think that would be my favorite fish besides Bettis. So that's a tough one, that's a tough one. The next question is, what is your dream fish? Oh, that's a hard one too. Because my dream fish is Bettis. Strong bodied, strong thinned, vigorous, healthy betta fish, both domestic and wild. My dream fish. I think a line of perfect fish is my dream fish. I also really like koi bettas, and there's a type of koi betta called the tancho koi betta, which is a betta whose markings resemble the tancho koi, which is a white body with one single red dot on the head. And I think they're so beautiful, and I'd love to breed a line that breeds true of Tancho Koi Bettas. I'm not sure how feasible that is or how realistic that is because the Koi gene is so hard to manipulate and stabilize. But that right now is my dream fish, is a stable line of Koi Bettas. This is a bouncy chair that swings and I like it a lot. <laughs> the next question, what is your favorite type of filter to use and why? I like sponge filters. It's hard to beat sponge filters. They're easy. I can run 20 sponge filters off of a single air pump and a single outlet and a single plug. You can't really beat that. I use tons of sponge filters. You can take a single sponge filter and all you need is a cheap little air valve and you can adjust it and you can have low flow rate, you can have a high flow rate, you can have whatever you want. Sponge filters can be used for fry, they can be used for big fish and shrimp and anything, anything at all. So sponge filters question is what lighting do you prefer and why? I like medium to high lighting because I really like aquatic plants. I have my own little plant collection. I call it my underwater garden. I like to collect plant species. I like LED lights that are medium to high light so I can have plenty of plants and I also really like CO2. 
Question seven, what is your favorite type of tank setup and why? I like heavily planted tanks. That's my favorite tank setup. It's a good light, lots of plants, a nutrient rich substrate. Uh, I like the way it looks, I like the way it functions, I like having plants in there. That's my favorite kind of setup. Now not all of my setups are like this, but I wish they were. That's my goal, <laughs> to have all of my tanks full of plants. It's getting hard to talk because my face is actually getting numb. The next question is, what is your dream tank? Ah, geez, my dream tank. I've never, I haven't really thought of it. Okay, I have a pretty vague dream tank. It's really big, and it's really long, and it has tons of plants in it, packed full of plants. My dream tank is like a Dutch-style aquascape that's just enormous, and it's beautiful, and it's packed full of little bitty nano fish. That is my dream tank. It's pretty vague. Uh, but that's the best I can come up with right now. And of course my dream tank always changes. <laughs> but that's it currently. The next question is, what keeps you in the hobby? For me, what keeps me, oh, boom. Oh, my face is getting numb, it's so cold. <laughs> what keeps me in the hobby, keeps, keeps me in the hobby, it's hard to say, is, pro is having goals. I have a better breeding setup. And what keeps keeps me what keeps me going in the hobby is having goals. I have certain goals that I want to hit. So having goals. I have goals of creating really beautiful lines of half moon and half moon placots. I have goals of spawning wilds. I have goals of entering my fish into the International Beta Congress shows and winning some shows. I have a goal of being well known in my hobby for what I can produce. I feel like that's what keeps me going. I can be pretty relentless when it comes to focusing on my goals. You know what else? Keeps keeps me in the hobby is awesome people like you guys who are watching my videos. It's really fun to have an audience and it's really neat and I I feel like sometimes when it gets hard that's what also helps keep me going is knowing that I have cool people watching me like you. <laughs> The next question is one from River Life. He asks the people he nominated this question. What is the most creative thing you've done for an aquatic project or in an aquatic project? And I can't tell you. I can't tell you because I'm not done with it. I have the coolest, most creative thing I've been working on since last October, over a year ago. And I can't share it yet because I'm not done with it. And I really want it to be perfect before I share it. It's a really nice aquascape. It's my own, it's a themed project and I made all of my own decorations. And it's been taking me forever because it was one of my first planted tanks I ever did. And I've made tons of mistakes and I've killed off my plants a few times, but it's this close to being done and I really hope to be able to share it soon. So that's my answer to that question. I have a really cool creative project that I can't share yet. And it drives me crazy because I want to share it. So stay tuned. That'll be coming on my channel fairly soon. So that's the challenge, guys. Now I have to nominate some people to do the challenge as well, but I'm not sure who I'm going to nominate yet because I'm sitting here in town and I don't know like who has and who hasn't already done it. So I'm gonna go home, figure that out, maybe splice it in. <laughs> And here's the splice. I've decided I'd like to nominate Inglorious Bettas and Tazawa Tanks and Big City Bettas. You guys don't have to do it if you don't want to, but it might be fun. The question I'd like to ask you guys for your question number 10 is, what is your desert island fish? If you could only have one fish on a desert island, what would it be? Totally stole that from Aquarium Co-op. Thank you so much for watching, guys. I can't believe I have 10,000 subscribers, actually more right now, on such a niche little channel. I'm really happy you guys are interested in what I do and how I do it. Stay tuned, check out my t-shirts that I have linked down below. I'm pretty happy about those. I'm really cold right now. But Mom, thanks so much for my mittens, I love them. I think I need to go grab another hot drink. What was I thinking filming outside today? Thanks to all my subscribers for all of your support. Thanks for watching and have a great day. Let's go film outside today, Taylor. Let's go film in Town Square today, today, Taylor. It's not that cold outside, Taylor. Now I'm huddled over a heating vent here at home. I'll put my butt over it. Warm me up, please warm me up. All right, I'm warm now. Turns out all I needed was this lovely blanket that my grandma made me. Thanks, grandma. And also this fantastic one-piece footy pajama that my Bop Pop gave me. Thanks, Bop Pop. Now my toddler and I can match. <laughs>